G'day everyone. Uh, this is a pretty exciting little video because we got Joff here. Uh, yeah, fresh, fresh face in this store, but not a fresh face in the industry. Um, he is like, you might say, be a humble kind of guy and be like, oh yeah, I know a thing or two about whiting popping, but the bloke's written articles in Western Angler on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's a fair, fair person to talk to for this stuff. Um, and we've got a whole array of lures and reels and rods to show you to basically get you guys into into chasing top water whiting this summer which has been a good summer so far for it yep yep shaping up well you've been down a couple of times already yeah Those yeah cricket score days yeah one of one of them um i raised the bat we we got 130 fish between three of us which is yeah. it's fair going it's a ripper, ripper of day, mate. yeah ripper. um last couple of times a bit quiet 20 30 fish but yep. Yep. But some better size amongst them and, and hopefully that'll that'll shine through for the rest of the season. And we're coming into the right time of the year for the better fish now too, aren't we? We've got the, the that December, January period is when the when, when the really good fish sort of start coming out through onto the flats. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a good time. You, you get know. that consistent warm water, the consistent clear water, yeah. you're not worrying about too much rain. And the, and the best thing is we don't have to use these things. Yeah. <laughs> For those who, of you who are wondering what those, they're just vibes. So if we're talking top water whiting, they uh, they don't qualify. Um, they're a good lure though if you're starting out and want to catch a whiting on a lure. Um, they smoke them most times and they're great for everything, flatties, brim, but... But I'm going to leave so, that one here. You're going to leave this I'll one leave here? I'll leave that one here because you can fish at top water. You can, you can. Zip bait Zoya, guys. Um, I'll talk about those ones later. So whiting, whiting popping, it, it's one of those things, it's fantastic because it appeals to everyone. It's not hard to run into a tackle shop, grab a single little stick bait, run out to a flat, and go and belt some of these around for some nice whiting. It's easy to do. You don't need super expensive specialist tackle. And every man, woman, and child could get into it down in Mandurah. Yeah. Great fishery, awesome fishery. And, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And the bonus is that the, the, these little whiting are probably one of the best eating species on the planet they are absolutely dynamite so not only do you have a, a, a rippingly fun fishery mate you get the benefits of getting the feed after it as well so fisheries we're talking peel mainly peel mainly swan to a lesser degree swans swan is a challenging fishery so the, the peel i think there's so many little surface there's little gambusia there's little glass shrimp they're always active and looking up. They're always feeding. Yeah, and it's all flats. It, the peel's mostly flats. 100%. So, so, you know, when you've got smaller little stick baits and, and, and surface lures, the, the fish are finding them a lot more um, actively than they do in the swan. The swan is a real challenging fishery. The fish are generally not looking up. Um, you know, the, the, the swan fish are generally sitting in slightly deeper water as well. 100%, yeah, yeah. Um, and as a result, those fish are very much i think it really very comes down up, yeah. 100 i think the swan there's a lot more worm species um you know the small squirt worms i think they call them you'd probably know that yeah 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 something like that yeah. definition but but i you regularly see them feeding on the bottom i'm yet to see a a, a, a bite like i see in peel you know on yeah the where stages, everything like everything just lights fish. up yeah, yeah. and there's, there's fish hitting things around yeah. you on the surface in saying that i've caught White, big whiting in the swan on bent minnows chasing brim on uh, flathead lures chasing flathead and flounder. Yep. Um, like I'm talking eight centimetre yep. like jerk bait style lures. Yep. Um, yep. So, and and then I'll go target them and mm. not get a hit. And mm. just, you see them swimming mm. around, they won't touch a thing. So <laughs> um, they, they are super cagey uh, for, for whatever reason, but they tend to be bigger. Yes. But peels just bulk, bulk fish. Uh, in around that, I've, I found the last couple of years that kind of 25 to, yep. to 28, 29 centimetres the average, and then a yep. fish over 30 is a very respectable fish. 100%, 100%. And then the, the, the crowing starts at about 35, doesn't it? Like oh, yeah, the yeah. 35s. Yeah. The 40 is that it almost seems at times like it's the unattainable mark. We, the, the, you know, the, I think my biggest is 37, 38, and it is a challenge to try and pin one of those 40 centimeter fish yeah, they are you'll see them eat it like you can you can see it straight away they're like that thick through the oh, shoulders 100%. and like 100 percent the scary looking the thing. bite's different yeah they're aggressive they might have two or three goes in really short and succession back off. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um i yeah bigger fish i've got a particular flat down in um yonder up 
uh, that I fish later in the year and it's it's a little pancake flat right out the back of it you only get to it via a boat but yeah I'm almost convinced that's where I'm going to get my 40 it's those little yeah. isolated flats out the back that don't get a lot of attention they're a little bit deeper and those big old cagey fish that don't want to come I mean I've seen some good you know 37s 38s but in water this deep yeah um, wow. but far more commonly those big fish are uh, sitting out in the deeper drop offs yeah yeah 100 percent. and there's also other fisheries out there so leshenol um has a whiting fishery quite a good one dunsborough foreshore is one that that's pretty niche but uh, mm-hmm. definitely holds lots of fish and good fish at that at times yep, yep. um and then blackwood blackwood's another one yeah that, that um you get good whiting popping um being so far south though you want those water temps up so peak of summer that's when it's probably going to fire the most so we covered locations what about yep. conditions what what I, are your ideal uh, locations so and i'm conditions? really specific about conditions um where i fish there's different locations i fish i chase different conditions i always fish with a wind at my back always like these things weigh next to nothing and the smaller options weigh even less Casting these into a wind is going to severely reduce your casting distance, but it's also more specifically, um, and when you ask about conditions, I like, number one, it has to be sunny. If it's not sunny, that these will not have a reflection and your catch rates will diminish exponentially. So sun that creates a shadow from these lures onto the, the, the floor of the, of the estuary um is is really really important so i like easterlies for where i fish um obviously the peel system within a sea breeze that gets very choppy very quickly and you lose a lot of that water clarity Uh, which is so important um so for most of us do target the the, that sort of yonder upside when it comes to um, targeting whiting especially early in the morning um it's a far more expansive sort of flat system there. There's a lot more yeah. sand in that in that yonder upside. Um, as you come more sort of to the Golden Bay side and that western yeah, side. Yeah, Falcon flats. And, you just don't yeah. seem to get as expansive of flats. They're smaller and shorter and, and a little bit more limited. So I do like to the expanses of the flats at, say, South Yonder Up, I think. They, they, or Yonder Up, South Yonder Up. North yeah, all good up. And, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, I always like a wind at my back um, and very clear warm water. One thing that I did hear from an old timer once, and, and I swear by it now, is whiting don't like wind. Now, like, are you talking 15 knots plus wind? Uh, or, uh, or from the day before. Yeah. So um, I started looking at this down in the Peel a couple of years ago when I first heard of this and I started just no, noticing that when we had an afternoon the day before that was screamingly windy and then you'd get that change of wind back to an easterly and then you would fish the next day. The fishing was good but never red hot. If you had a full day of easterlies and then you went fishing the following day, the fishing was always 10 out of 10. And a full day of easterlies is generally a hot day as well. 100%, yeah. 100%. So obviously, and that is obviously heating the, heating the flats and making those fish active. But I also think it doesn't allow the water to get murky. Yeah. So the minute you walk out on that flat in the morning, that flat is so clear. And as a result, the fish are feeding really aggressively. Um, tides, tides are the big thing for where I fish. Um, the, I have two main locations. I have a deep water, or three really. I have deep water um, drop-offs. I have the shallow sand flats and I have pancake flats. They're the yeah. three I generally fish. The uh, deeper pancake flats, generally I fish them towards the bottom of below when the fish push back out from the mouths of the, of the estuaries and bits and pieces and, 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 and as that water drops, they'll push to the deeper channels to feed and then as that drops even further, they'll move back onto the, onto the pancake flats that are generally out from those passes. So the other flat systems that I fish are deep drop-offs from a shallow sand flat and that actually works on the opposite system of the tide. So if you can imagine a shallow little edge dropping off into a deeper edge, the fish want to come up here, but there's not enough water at the top of this 
flat, the birds will see them and stuff. Uh, they're in danger. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, as a result of that, I actually fish that tide on an incoming. T- I fish that flat on an incoming tide, and normally when there's at least two thirds of that tide uh, in already and building from there, so the last last of the run in, yeah, last couple of hours of the run out, yeah, I'll run in, yep, yeah, sorry. Um, that way, the fish move back up onto the shallow parts of the flat, and again, I can target them. But that, that, I suppose that's one thing we say is, you, you, when you put a lure over a whiting's head, there's no guarantee that that one whiting's gonna come up and belt that. No, it's usually they come from the side. That like, it's funny like that. You'll, you'll pick a school of whiting, and you'll, you'll fire it at them, but the, the best cast are the ones that get the better response to the side of them. Yep. They see the silhouette or they see the, the flash first. They'll see 100%, something 100%. and they'll get into feeding mode because that's what they're used to. They're not used to prawns skipping right over them. You would have you would have seen them chasing the shadows on the, yep, on the yep, floor. Yeah, definitely seen that. Um, it looks like they're just tailing the lure, but they're actually just after the shadow. 100%. Yeah, yeah. They're literally biting at the, sh- at the shadow on the, on the floor. I, I, I wondered myself how many times... That's actually, that's how they've worked out that there's a lure above them is that they're grubbing, they're ch- chasing that shadow. And then they look up and, oh, and there's a And it's that conversion yeah, 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 to, yeah. oh, whoops, it's above me. I I find that really interesting. What are your favourite lures for down on the... Well, I'd say, like, I I get in, in a habit of using the same lures that work. Yeah. Um, so the ones that I've been using lately and... And, and that's, yeah. I'll, that's not a bad thing because... I, to use a lure and to get to use that lure yourself and can really know that lure, you maximise the ability of you catching fish on that lure. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you're going to use a hundred different lures and use them all not quite right, or you could use one lure and use it bang yeah. on. If fishing is like ninety percent a confidence thing with whatever you're doing, working demersal jigs or, or yeah. walking the dog with some of these lures. Um, so yeah, like my, my go-tos are like surface stick baits, bass day sugar pens, uh, Daiwa in feet slippery dogs. I've been a huge fan of the slippery dogs. You, since you have been, out. and these are relatively new, the slippery dogs, because yeah. they um, they've they've come out with a with a bang, haven't they? Yeah, well, they come pre rigged Yeah. So um, usually and we you, have will to. Do you rig fish them? with the treble on the on the on the uh, underside of the I belly? Do. Or are you taking that off? No, no, no. I fish with the treble on there. Um, it anchors it a little bit in the water. Okay. Um, as in, it gets the the head doing the right thing so it's not too much affected by wind, okay. particularly when wind chops comes into it. Yeah. Worth saying here that we're very specific. I mean, obviously you've got your particular laws that you, we both use very similar things, but we are, we are similar fishermen in the fact that we, we like to understand the laws that we fish and fish them well. Yeah. And that's why, you know, realistically, you've got your particular laws that you love and you you run and I've got laws that I particularly work and, and I run. And they're so vastly different but we still get the same results because we're fishing them correctly. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, when I started out what, two or three years ago with this whiting popping, um, I started with things like skinny pops as well. I caught good fish on skinny pops actually, but the trend has been more towards floating stick baits and I guess yep. they are more widely applicable. Yep. Um, but a lot of your natural kind of prawn patterns and, and that what we have there is like a pink head with almost like a chartreuse body. That is my favorite color in these slippery dogs. Um, so that that color there, the equivalent in the slippery dogs is just deadly. And, and I know sugar pens work because I used them before, but since these have come out, I've killed it. They have like- You've little, moved got a more to them, them than the sugar pens really, haven't you? I have, because they got a nice little rattle to them. They cast so well and they walk the dog just so easily and they get eaten. Um, I was finding, so I was using the 65 size and I was getting fish, but I was getting a lot of small fish. And I thought, I want to get bigger fish. There's a lot of fish out here. I want to try and pick my way through them. So I went up to the 80. And I found when I went to the 80, I didn't get bigger fish. I just got more fish because yep. they were eating it just so aggressively. Because it's a bigger profile lure, they had to eat it aggressively to kill it. Yes. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just crazy. That And it obviously cast better, bigger lure. Um, that's, that's what I found. I find an interesting similarity with the with the Atomics. Obviously, same lure here, just same version as the Atomics and the K9 Pups, um, bigger and smaller versions. The same as what Jason's basically saying is that when the conditions are a little bit windier or the fish are um, a little bit deeper, it, it's a fine line 
with, with stick baiting, with which lure do you go? Which ones work better in the wind and which ones uh, work better in uh, still conditions? And, and yeah. this is, I, I think, changing lures out. I, I'm not a... We were talking before about knowing your lures and, 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 and that side of thing. The other side of things I'd say is I, I generally, when I go fishing, I don't change a lot of lures. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ripping lures off after multiple casts. Whiting, completely different. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling these lures, things yeah. off every third, fourth cast, changing, swapping them out. Different colours on different days. Same it's, with squid. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. They have different yeah. moods, don't they, through a tide? Like a, in, a, in a two hour period, you'll have a fish that'll. Um, you know, we'll start hitting that, and then twenty minutes later, they, you'll be casting that, and it'll just be dead. Yeah. And then you switch to something smaller and a little bit more color, and bang, they're back on it. Move to a different part of the flat. Move from shallow to deep, uh, yeah. and it's a different lure entirely. Uh, so, yeah. so you would be using clips for a lot of these as well, I'd imagine. I do. I use the little size zero decoy. Yeah, um, uh, spiral snaps, I think they're called, perfect. and perfect. they're great. Like I use them for flatties, brim, yep. whiting, popping. Yep. Um, I find they do like because they got some weight associated with them, and when we run fluorocarbon leader as well, yep. Um, generally, that that's a sinking line, so you're pulling the nose of the stick bait down. So if yep. you're finding that your stick bait's diving almost, like sometimes they still eat it while it's diving, yep. uh, but you just don't get the same satisfaction out of the out of the hit. So you can almost work at twitching with a rod tip on a forty five. That's what I do sometimes. And, and yeah. I I do pick up on your fluorocarbon there. Being heavier than water and having such small light stick baits, what what is the average length of fluorocarbon you're using on a on a whiting outfit? I, I base it off my cast. I don't like yep. running two. I mean, when I'm running four pound, yep. I'll run a longer leader okay. because yep. I'm going for that finesse presentation. So I want yep. everything to be in my favour. Yep. If I'm using six pound and the fish are fired up, I actually yep. run quite a short leader so I don't have to Absolutely. run the leader not through the guide. So and much. obviously, the shorter leader being fluorocarbon is not weighing a lot of those yep. fronts of the stick base down. So I, I, I'm much the same. I, I started with a you know a, a full length leader. Now I'm down to about fifty or sixty centimeters, and yep. I'm. I'm not seeing any difference. I mean, we're fishing for such... not the chase sometimes yeah, as well. Was, <laughs> we're running such light gear and, um, you know, our main line is so light. And not, not, not forgetting, this is something I also thought, we, we always try and go the lightest possible leader, the lightest, you know, finest entry type things. Uh, most of my assist cords have actually been tar- tied on a braided PE1. Yeah, and they're still sucking it in. Yeah, so it, 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 you know, I don't think I think these things are so fixated on this small little prawn getting away that they're really not looking at that. You know, they're not spooking on certain things um, until they do. Like if you got weed on your lure, oh, that's, that's a killer. A, yeah, that the green floaty stringy killer. weed. Everyone, yeah. everyone who fishes the swan and peel would be familiar with that stuff. <laughs> it's death. a nightmare. Yeah. Mm. Um, the, the one that Joff was holding up there's little that's the smallest size of the Ocean's Legacy Stinger Assists. Um, I, I rig a lot of my um, stick baits and and like things like Zoe's with them as well. I also am a big fan of the the BKK um, little assists that come standard on the the slippery dogs there. Um, one here's a little trick. Here's a little trick that I'll give the guys. These are really light, and I don't know about you. Because I've never asked you this, but when I replace a middle treble, I take that treble off. I don't add another one. What you can do with these little assists, if you want that little bit more tail weight, um, add a couple of split rings in front of that toe point, and it actually adds that little bit more of a toe point True. to the back of it. Okay. Just weighs the back of the stick back down. Just that. It's only very, very small change. But it's a, it's a light lure, so any small change you make with the lure is going to affect the section. hundred percent. It just digs that tail in a little bit more. Um, and it I find the nose up. hundred percent, hundred percent. In in regard to lure modification, I'm quickly just taking through the clear atomic uh, canine walks. These are unbeatable for Swan River whiting. The the fish in the Swan are so smart. Um, I, I get a couple of these and put them in your box for the swan fish. Not a lot of people have them as well. Like they're, these are the ones that they, they they don't come with hooks or anything like that. They give them to you so you can do your custom paint job on. Correct. Correct. Um, and we've we've gone and we've we've we stocked these now, um, at, just at your request because you want that clear profile, that clear presentation. There. It is basically a lure blank. So <laughs> we uh, look we. It, 
you can go as far as sticking a couple of eyes on here. You and don't need it, I don't uh, think. Yeah. You, you, mate, you pull it out of the packet, yeah. you stick some hooks on it, you throw it out. It, it literally will catch you fish from the get-go. But for the swan, for some reason, where the fish are super, super smart, that is the lure you want. I'll, I'll throw in as well, um, the zip bait zoya. And, and we were having this conversation before uh, about, oh, it's a sinking lure, what's it doing on the table? <laughs> Um, so yes, the, the Zoya is the sinking lure, uh, but the, and a few people have got onto this now and it's, it's been a bit of a, bit of a niche thing, but it's a finesse presentation for chasing whiting. They will take the front treble off, take the back treble off, both of them. Um, you end up actually tying or clipping your little clip swivel to the tail side mm. and running a set of assists off the back. So you've just got assists. It's called reverse rigging. And instead of letting it sink and twitching it and like that, you bring it, like first you cast it out, you belt it out as far as you can, and then you bring it straight to the top by winding, like just a little bit quickly. So it comes to the surface. Once you get it on the surface, keep that pace, keep that steady pace. And you've just got your rod tip up on a 45 degree angle and you're just wiggling like super quickly, like not even twitching, just wiggling yeah. your rod tip, yeah. and it skips across the top. And as it skips, that little tail just slaps the water, and it's just awesome. like a fleeing prawn. Awesome prawn and that, isn't that it? is another killer for the swan, yeah. and particularly bigger fish in the peel um, have responded really well to that in the past. Do you use a lot of the skinny pops? Are you a fan of the skinny pops? I mean, these- They've got a place. They uh, definitely have a place. 100%. So I suppose it's worth explaining to everyone that, that Whiting have a mood through the season, and I don't know if we've really touched on that early in the in the season, because the water temps haven't heated up on the flats and the consistency of the consistency of the water temp isn't there. The fish go through a period where they can be hot and cold. Um, as the season moves through, and obviously the water temps uh, pick up and the lawn current comes down, we get more consistent temperatures. Um, all the way down the coast and as a result the estuaries and stuff will increase a degree or so as well you know obviously if the water temps are a blanket of 19 degrees then the estuary is going to vary from that 19 degrees if that main solar heating essentially is, is driving that the water temps 100 percent 100 percent so later in the season the fish are a lot more active but early in the in the season the fish can be down a little bit deeper and just just they require a little bit more and different techniques to call them up yep. um i i have started fishing as early as like september down south and like mainly in the peel fantastic time of year for big fish uh but generally speaking it's it's small slow popping and it's a completely different almost a completely different fishery well these are actually one of my better big fish producers for particular flats further agree, down into the system I, I think because they have that bigger profile in the water and they are a really good prawn imitation. They're, they're, they're more of an aggressive pop or aggressive uh, surface action compared to these other ones, which we're talking finesse, walk the dog. Very, very, very slidey, fine entry with, with, yeah. the, with, the, with, with the stick baits. These, because they've got the cupping cupped face and depending on how you work these, these you can either work like a popper or you yeah. can work like a stick bait, really. Yeah. Uh, I walk the dog as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, massively. So, um, where these I think come into their own, and where I fish these more than anything else, is that September to late October period, and when I'm fishing deeper passes on an incoming tide and want to call fish up. Yeah, and I can literally pop this with slow pops. Blue not, not, yeah. yeah, not as not as slow as you would for um, deep water species, but with a definitive pause between them. Um, and yeah, I've, these definitely call up the bigger fish yeah. and definitely on the deeper passes. Uh, I like to take that middle, I've just taken that off to show you, but I take that middle treble off. Um, and whack an assist on the back, eh? Hey? Uh, just an assist on the back, yeah. yeah. Uh, I normally run slightly longer assist with these. As we're um, popping these back to us, if a fish comes up behind it, I sort of just, put more movement in the in the popper and don't pop it as, as brutally. Tiny bloops out of it. Yeah, a yeah. lot more, yeah, more action, less movement. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, to the point where sometimes, really early in the season, I've cast these over fish and literally just 
uh, hardly even winding the tea bag literally <laughs> and it's just it's 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 shimmying in the spot and that's enough to get a wide in to come up and have a go yeah. so and the longer assists help with your your hookup conversion uh, flows, i think reckon? so yeah so the, the the feeding system is that obviously the whiting come up behind and they're that they're underslung mouth and as they open the mouth the water is sucked through the mouth which is why obviously we're using an assist hook um the lighter and longer assists have a little bit more movement so when that whiting comes up behind that lure and and, and sucks to, to try and suck the, the the lure in to try and grab that prey species it's finding that it gets those assist hooks pulled into its mouth far easy i find a lot of the time with the assist hooks the assist hooks are up under the chin or they're up over the face a lot of the time they're hooked around the face yeah rather than even that's out. like on yeah. a lot of stick baits that's why i keep the trouble on as well because they'll yeah. they'll whack it across the face 100 percent. you know these fish are incredibly hard to keep hooks in at the best of times so 100%. the more hooks in the game the better <laughs> um and the other thing with with the whiting too is that you, you're not you're not just going to run into the one one fish no. generally when you've got fish coming up on your lures you're going to have three or four fish coming up on every single retrieve so if you don't hook the first fish that has a swipe at your lure if you keep that movement happening and that and the retrieve um, consistent the second third or fourth fish that swipes at it in that retrieve will hook up anyway right so rods and reels let's do rods and reels yeah let's do rods and reels because it's fun should we do rods first and i'll i'll do technique at the same time absolutely okay so when we talk like i would have mentioned the technique walking the dog and that that's like the go-to whiting one that's your usually your be all and end all of, of whiting fishing is the walk the dog um as what that means is twitching your rod tip as as you're winding and whilst pointing your rod tip at the lure um what that will do is create some slack line which allows the lure to turn in the water in one direction and then you twitch tightens the line makes it go in the other direction and it does this zigzag pattern across the top and it's absolutely killer like just keep a steady retrieve steady wind the the speed of the winding and the and the knocking of the rod tip are a, a, a feel thing and it changes from lure to lure yeah but it, it's as simple as, as um I, I i work what rod tip down if i can but if i have to um i'll go rod tip up on the 45 but yeah it's just standing and twitching i'm, I'm not sure if the, that'll get in frame but <laughs> But that, that's, that's the general gist of it. The um, advantage, obviously, with the rod tip up is you're elevating that stick bait high, so you're getting that walk really you're easy. The walk. Yeah. I find it a little bit more comfortable rod tip down, but that's oh, 100%. it's a hundred percent comfortable. And until the RSI kicks in oh, from, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, the, from the twitching. Nah, just old man things. <laughs> <laughs> so lengthwise, we're looking 2.1 2 meters through to about 2.4, 2.6, an absolute yeah. stretch. Well, that little bit of extra length gives you casting distance, which is one of the most important things with these. Like Absolutely. you'll notice most of your fish, particularly your bigger fish, will eat in the first kind of quarter of your retrieve. Yep. That as soon as the lure hits the water to, you know, the first five meters is when a big fish is gonna gonna latch on. So yep. long rods, light rods, yep. good casting rods. Yep. Um, this one here, Daiwa in feet, that's the two hundred dollar one. So the base model, the, I think that's a seven foot two. Um, and it's a regular taper. So this one is actually, it bends quite evenly through the blank and that is designed to keep hooks in. There you go. Like that. But it's also quite crisp on the tip, especially for a rod of, of only $200. So very good value option. Um, there are longer ones, there are shorter ones. Um, this is almost that perfect midpoint. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Then we got, as a little bit of a step up price wise, we got your, at $380, the uh, Ocean's Legacy Quest. This is the fast taper one. It's quite a soft, fast taper. So it's gonna keep the little hooks pinned in the fish still. But because it's a fast taper, you're gonna get um, you, the most out of the twitching. That walk the dog action is gonna be superb on these. And these, when you pick them up, you'll notice they are such a light rod. I think it's like 70 grams or something. It's ridiculously light. Super comfortable in hand, super comfortable to use all day. Mash with a light reel, just lovely. Um, and I suppose that that's the big thing to get across to people is you want to be in frame. Oh. <laughs> um, don't hide. <laughs> You're hiding. I'm trying to load these up. Um, <laughs> oh no. no. <laughs> um, is is the fact that if if you, you go with something that's super finesse, you're going to enjoy yeah. it a hell of a lot more too. Another nice 
like I'd, I'd say not a soft blank. No. But just a little bit spongy through here, which is good. Like keeping hooks in. These fish are masters at spitting hooks, particularly the big ones. You've done enough of this, you'll know. You can hook big fish, but landing them is a different story. Um, your Margo blanks have a superb rep reputation. I think this is the the blue current seven four. Um, so they're coming at 600 bucks, so premium option out of Japan. Um, again, super light, super crisp tip, but it is on that slightly slower side, that one so you, side. you take that one home. I'll take that one home. You, you're taking it home? Thank you. Beautiful. So that'll do your whiting popping just superbly. What? <laughs> Jeez. I'm trying to set the alarm off on us here. <laughs> So real reels are just light. That, that's reels, what you want, small and light. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, the advancement of the long stroke spools are probably the biggest thing. Yep. You know, for, for the casting, um, for the, you know, for the FKs and the exists. Um, that 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 slow oscillation in the stellar oh. there is because it lies it lays the line so closely together on the spool there you're going to get your maximum casting distance next time you go to cast. So that spool oscillates so slowly, so it's very finely laying all that line. So when it peels off, it'll peel off, slower up the spool and not go up and down so much. 100%. That's essentially what that does for you, which, I and, mean, it's expensive, but that's what you get when you buy expensive. And the, the big thing with the, with the new silent drives is a huge improvement on these things. Yeah, and it's coming through in a lot of the um, the cheaper stuff as Absolutely. well. So we've got like our, our entry level option here is the Shimano Nasty. Got a bit of core protect as well, so it's got some degree of water protection, um, but just a beautiful little reel. And unbelievable that a reel that's sub two hundred dollars can come with a ten year warranty. I, know. I find that phenomenal. That is pretty handy. And then I mean I can't go past this one. This is what I use because. For me, this represents the best value for money in Absolutely. light tackle fishing, the Shimano Vanford. Yeah. Um, just everything about it. The drag, it's light, it's smooth, readily serviced as well. Anyone familiar with the CI4s would be... Yeah, that, that's the advancements of the CI4s. Um, and then like your Caldia from Daiwa. That, that's probably my favourite Daiwa in that, that mid-range. The Caldia, value 100%. for money. 100%. Um, with a new MQ design. Um, you know, they're, they're able to put bigger gears in there with only one point of entry into the body of the reel there. You know, lessens that, that chance of water getting in, which, you know, you're fishing on the flats. I'm saying. Uh, you will drop your reel at some point. I've done it. Everyone's done it. See ya, Brian. Yeah, can I say goodbye to you? No. So storage-wise... Those. So when we say those, we mean... Just to cut that glare a bit and do some advertising. <laughs> yes, we do have Yeti. And there we go. So I'm yeah. sorry you guys had to deal with like If you had to put sunglasses on, I feel for you. Because the reflection of the light off. off it's so. an old guy thing. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See ya, Brian. Um, right, storage wise. Storage. Um, get one of those. Get 100%. a sling bag. Get a couple. Get yeah. a couple. Um, Oh, you love them. You, I can't them. say enough good things How about many these you things. Bought? I've got three. <laughs> so, and I reckon it'll be four or five by the end of the year. Um, gear bags for me, it's just it, it's so easy. Come in, grab, and go. I so I now have one of these for every type of base fishing that I do. So, um, but whether that be like the shore estuary stuff down here for the brim flathead and giant herring, I have one bag for that. I have one bag for my tailor stuff, and I have one bag for my whiting stuff. So. It doesn't matter what fishing I'm doing. I walk in the house, uh, run in, grab this and run out. It's got all the gear. It's got good storage um, holders here for your keys and bits and pieces. They're actually big enough to put your keys in. Um, Finally. <laughs> you can get a big phone in there as well. And the little storage pouch here for your knife. Or, sorry, for your, um, for your snips. And the really handy thing is that clips straight onto your snips so that when you're out in the field, you can actually pull your snips out, leave them hang while you're in between tying knots, and then put them away. It's just I'll put a pliers on. I, I get little pairs of like scissor pliers, and, yep. and for unhooking whiting, that's perfect. perfect. You want to have it handy. I usually put it in my pocket, but having the lanyard there really helps. The really good thing about this is obviously when you're on the flats and you've got your, your wading bag on, you can pull it round in front of you, and you've got a, a shelf 
to work from. Like a working station. Yeah, that's so good. There's, you, you know, there's nothing worse when you're out the flat. And you walk a long way doing this. Yeah. It's not, you're not walking a little way. It's a full day of walking and waiting. The only problem I've had with rods and reels under the arm when I'm trying to do this is trying to hold onto a rod and change yeah, lures. It's and difficult. It's, it's a nightmare. Um, having that system is great. It's got the two, the two pouches. You can either run that on the little... Um, segmented section there and keep this free which is what I generally do and then in the back part of this one there's another great feature that it's got they've got stacks of pockets in the pockets too the so. secondary pockets in here so you can put your leader and your and your spare assist zips together more pockets and you can poke a stick at and it's as easy as that on the flat hands are free You've got the light seven foot four rod, that your whiting basket, which we probably yep. should explain what is a whiting basket and how yep. do they work. And your, your landing net, because the worst thing is um, trying to deal with whiting are slippery. They're like uh, your estuarine trout, so <laughs> incredibly hard to hold on to. And you try to get a good photo with the lure in, and they're like, I've done it. I've got the last time I got to travel with the hand, it stuck my two fingers together. Yeah. Um, and while we're on the topic of landing nets, this is actually a pretty cool one. This is like an Angler Tech landing net. And the best part is that frame floats. Very handy. So you're dealing with your whiting, you want to take a photo, just put that in the water. Put your whiting in the basket, it swims around, and you can lift it out of the net just above to take your photo. And then if it falls in, it will fall in. It goes back into the net. It's not swimming around on the flats, going nuts, you know, falling off. And then there goes your PB whiting just because you're trying to get a photo. And obviously the basket side of things, the a lot of people make I make my own. You can Obviously. there's some people out there who make theirs you can you can buy. I make mine out of pool noodle and um some rando basket I picked out of IKEA. Yep. <laughs> there's been many a basket been uh, borrowed from Colson and Woolies. Woolies, yes, hundred percent. Alright, so yeah, baskets DIY. Hundred percent DIY yep, yep. Um mainly DIY. Uh, a lot of them consist of just the standard um to be honest, Coles will these baskets with a bull noodle around the outside that just float them on the top. Yeah, you need you a cover though, because they you, do jump. <laughs> you can add a cover. Um, yeah, many times I've lost a couple of lighting jumping out of my basket post capture. So yeah, cover them. Uh, boots wise, wading, not a lot of issues to avoid down in the in the estuaries. Oh, there's things called crabs. I would avoid them. Um, like they like to pinch you. So half decent quality wading boots, wetsuit boots are gonna do your trick. As long as, if you imagine a, a crab grabbing onto your, your toes, um, anything that'll stop that hurting is gonna give you a little bit of a win. Or the embarrassment of you jumping out of the water like you're yeah. being attacked by a scorpion. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people do it in thongs and it's not pretty, <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> so get, get yourself a half decent pair of uh, wading shoes. I use the rock spike ones because I hate falling over. And they're re more so because they've got really sturdy rubber on the exterior. Something that comes up past your ankle, I find, is yep. really good. You don't get a lot of shale and stuff coming inside your boot, and you are wearing these. They do have cobbler the... in the peel as well. True, yes, So that's true. another thing to, to watch for. Yeah. What else have we got? The what giveaway. Have we got for us? Let's give something yeah. away. Yeah, well, we've got to give something away. So let's clear the table. <laughs> oh, oh, he's getting serious. <laughs> let's clear the table. We've got give a pack of lures. Mm -hmm. Pack of diver lures and some leader. So we've got the new, what they call it Crosslink or X-Link FC. Uh, there's two packs there, a seven pound and an eight pound. Seven pound, interesting. Perfect. Both fluorocarbon. So they're on the heavier side for what we'd use for this, but they're probably the best estuary all around. As you're talking flathead, river tailor, you might lose a few lures, but you know, eight pounds still reasonable. hundred percent. Brim, you're probably fine on all of those. So they're, they're a good little pack. And included in this little pack, We've got some slippery dogs. My favourite whiting lure at the moment, the one I'm frothing, and um, some pretty cool colours in there as well. Little pack. So there. you're ready to go. You've got the lures. You've got yep. the leader. As long as you've got a rod and a reel, we get you onto the flats and get you fishing. And with the advice that we've given you, you should be able to pin a few of those beautiful, tasty whiting for this summer. Yeah. I do wonder how. What, what do we need to do to give this away, though? Oh, what What do they need to do? Oh. So I think how we'll run this is we'll do the same one that we did with the Infeet giveaway. We'll go like, subscribe. Most of you should be already subscribed, but for those of you who aren't, um, you probably want to get onto that. 
just quietly. Um, like, subscribe, uh, and then comment. What are they going to comment? Ooh. What's your personal best whiting yeah, on top order? Yeah, in yeah. In WA. In yeah, WA. It's a fair call. I'll be impressed if anyone puts a 40 up. I'll be very and impressed. If you've caught a 40, or even even like big whiting, you've got to crack a photo of it, send it through to us on our Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Because, I mean, we'd love to see it. The Grail. We'd the love Holy to see Grail. It. Holy Grail's yep. the 40. Yep. If any of you guys have cracked the 40, we'd love to see it. And yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys um, and also your, your thoughts on the video. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for watching, Legends. Thank we'll see you, you in the next much. one. Cheers. Starlines.